Hello all and welcome to this slightly different video where I'm going to be doing my first Q&A so that you can all get to know me better. You hear me doing a lot of singing and you see me doing a lot of reaction videos and vlogs and things but I thought it'd be a nice opportunity to do this sort of more casual video so that you can get to know me better as a person and an artist behind all the filming and also use it as an opportunity to ask me any burning questions you might have for me. Okie dokie, let's get started. So I have my phone here, if I'm looking down it's just because I'm looking through the questions. So I'll start with the ones asked on YouTube. Jessav Musica y Palabras, is that? I think that's Spanish maybe. Let me try again. Jessav Musica y Palabras, let me know if I said that right, asks, what's your favourite aria slash opera slash composer? Very good question. I might be seen as being a little bit dull or maybe the opposite in that I always find it hard to choose a favourite, whether it's food, whether it's composers, whether it's items of clothing or anything like, I'm just quite indecisive and my opinion kind of changes all the time in terms of those kind of things. At one point my favourite aria was The Doll Song, which I recently reacted to and that was just because when mastered it is just such a unique piece. But then I came across Martha's aria, her mad scene, in Rimsky-Korsakov's The Tsar's Bride. And being able to sing that piece was just so amazing. It's such a beautiful piece and I love the way that he uses the register of the soprano, like the high B-flat and then just the mid-range sort of floating when it starts to reveal her mad hallucinations and things. It's quite tragic as well. So that's in terms of arias. Operas? I don't really have a favourite. I kind of have rough favourites. Just trying to think now. I quite like romantic operas in general just because there's so much variation. You have Wagner and then you have Rossini. To me, I find Rossini is sometimes sounds like extremely ornamented Mozart in some ways. And then there's Offenbach. I think not just in terms of operas though, I have found that I've generally explored the 19th century most, so I guess that's why I see so much variety in it. But then again, I was going through this crazy Benjamin Britten phase in my second year where I literally went to so many operas to just explore his music more because I think he's quite unique as a 20th century composer in that some of his stuff is like completely tonal and very not conventional but just sort of pleasant to the passing ear and then other stuff is just like bitonal weird stuff like, for example, Death in Venice. When I first saw and heard that opera, I kind of found it quite hard to listen to just because it's so unrecognisable tonally. But then you have things like Peter Grimes, which I quite liked. I've kind of addressed arias and composers and operas, but in a different way, I hope that's okay. I'm just, I can never really say I have a favourite of one thing just because it keeps changing. I'm constantly falling in love with new music and I guess that's why I'm doing music as a career because if I had just one favourite maybe I wouldn't be as enthusiastic or exploring as much in a sense. Hopefully indecision is a good thing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. <laughs> it's a really loud plane. Next up Adam Garwood, how do you rate Dimash as a vocalist slash performer? Nice question. From what I have heard, I'd say nine out of 10. And the reason it's not 10 out of 10 is I like to think that everyone's got somewhere further to go because that makes the idea of what some people might deem a perfect performer 
more exciting. Hence you'd want to listen to their next albums or performances. Ah, that was annoying, I ran out of battery. I think what I was trying to say was that it's exciting to follow them on their musical journey and to see what they may sing next and what skills they might get as they mature. Also, he's still quite young, so I'm sure his voice has a lot more maturing to do, which is quite exciting, and it'll be cool to see what happens next. Just reading from my notes earlier because I know I would have forgotten where I was. Next question is Maximo Rizzo saying, what do you think is the most difficult piece for a singer? And I'd love if you could briefly explain why you think that? Good question. To be honest, I don't think there's one most difficult piece as a singer because each piece that we learn has certain challenges. I used to think the doll song, again, had to be the most difficult. Then obviously there's things like the Queen of the Night aria as well, roles such as Violetta, from La Traviata. Even other things that may seem more simple might have dramatic challenges as well. Some characters can have a lot of mystery behind them and you have to sort of tackle what you think they're going through, while even directors sometimes might sort of not give you any specific answers because they want the character to have that certain mystery to it, so you kind of have to make up your own decision. Similarly, a piece might not go to the extremes of a certain voice type in terms of using the top notes, but it could just be sitting on the top range for a long time. For example, I'm currently working on Donna Anna in Don Giovanni, and I've had to block myself off from listening to recordings of it after a certain point because they tend to be heavier sopranos and I need to sort of make sure I'm not copying them because while they have good technique I will start copying what their voice sounds like rather than just focusing on my own technique. So yeah, there's not really a single difficult piece. I might write some in the comments that come to mind that are quite difficult, but generally I like to think there's a challenge in most music because it makes it more fun. Vandana Malhotra says, is it possible for anybody to become a soprano opera singer or is it something you train to do from a very young age? Obviously Dimash probably had genetics, or did he simply train because of his mum? So I think it's possible for anybody to become a singer or an opera singer. The whole voice range depends on a certain amount of things. It kind of depends on the length of your vocal cords and also the fullness of your sound it depends on your vocal cords as well as the shape of your body, how tall you are, because your whole body resonates when you sing. I'm not sure with Dimash, to be honest. I mean, a great voice never comes from just genetics. You've got to train it, and that's the fun in it, because I guess what would you do otherwise? It's good to improve your voice. I guess he's quite unique in that I think he's got kind of tenory voice but has quite a good falsetto so yes to some extent you can definitely train your voice but once you've trained you'll start to notice where your healthy range is for example some sopranos who are at the top of the operatic stage only sing up to well i say only but it's still very high will sing up to, say, a top E flat, but others will be singing higher than that, like an extra note or so. For example, I know Callus was famous for her high G, which I think is one of the highest anyone's ever gone. And half of that is training, but half of that is genuinely just what 
your vocal cords are made of and your body. Next question, do you ever sing any Gershwin songs? I have in the past, but I actually want to explore Gershwin more. Yeah, I would love to do more Gershwin. And it's not just because he has some Ukrainian heritage. <laughs> I think his music is so unique and so beautiful. Obviously, the go-to would be Summertime, the song, but I truly think that is such a beautiful work and it never gets old when I listen to it. Okay, next question. I'm puzzled with your name. Were you born in Ukraine and moved to England or were you born there? I was born in England and yes, it's a Ukrainian name, but obviously the spelling is a bit different because it goes by the Polish spelling because that would have been the first place that my family would have traveled through. Hence, it's got a bit of a funny spelling rather than just being spelt phonetically in English. Good question. I seem to understand you have completed your BA studies and are considering what to do now, but I get the idea you want to do studies more. Yes? Yes, I am taking a couple of gap years to get familiar with the industry and build up my experience, but in the long run, I definitely want to do further studies, more in performance, because my bachelor's was in all-round music, so musicology, composition and performance, so it was a university bachelor's degree. But I want to go into more performance work when I start studying again, hence I'm trying to gain loads more experience by taking these gap years. Next up, what kind of warm-ups do you do? Good question. So it really depends, to be honest. It depends how I feel. If I feel tense one day, I'll start with a lot of stretches. But I always like to incorporate some sort of non-singing body awareness into my practice as well. Whether it's like halfway through a practice or later in the day. Generally, I like to keep my warm-ups quite simple because one of my teachers rightly said one time that a warm-up is just meant to be like when you're a runner you're stretching the muscles just getting ready for a workout so similarly with singing you're sort of being gentle on yourself before you actually start doing the more virtuosic things i like to kind of change my warm-ups i don't really stick to one so often I'll even just make up warm-ups just for the sake of having something new for my voice to get around. So yeah, I tend to start with very simple warm-ups and then I might do a Vakai piece or something and then I'll start singing actual repertoire and somewhere in between there I'll probably do some body awareness or stretches or something. Right, last couple of questions. First one, could I ask about your background and also what languages do you speak? So we've said about my background. Languages, I speak English, then Ukrainian, and then I'm trying to learn German as well because it's super useful for musicians. Next question, is it hard to keep slow vibrato on pitch? So to be honest, with vibrato, it mostly comes as a result of the vibration of the vocal cords along with your whole body vibrating. So you can intentionally change the speed of it or make it more rapid or more wide. For example, in singing, a trill is basically like an extreme vibrato, whereas in other instruments, it's usually just flicking between two notes but that's how classical singers do it. Is it hard to keep slow vibrato on pitch? I'd say with slow vibrato, slow vibrato doesn't equal out of tune, but sometimes out of tune singing can sound like a very slow vibrato, but it's more to do with the tone and the pitches that it's fluctuating on. A vibrato is a slight fluctuation in pitch which gives us that sort of wobbly, if you like, sound. 
And if the difference between the pitches that you're fluctuating between are too big, it can sound out of tune. But usually the pitches it fluctuates between are very close together. It's less than a semitone most times. I hope that answers your question. Right, I think I'm going to wrap up there. I hope you enjoyed this Q&A. And if you feel that you want to know more or... I didn't particularly answer a specific thing, feel free to comment below. Or if you have any thoughts on any of the topics in terms of the singing type questions, feel free to comment as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you like my content, do check out my Facebook and Instagram pages. I'll put both the names up here. I really appreciate your support, so do like, comment, share your thoughts. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye!